Hello, Spanko here, and I'm just doing a quick, I suppose it's a bit of a vlog. First thing, I had a, a question from Thomas, who uh, posted a question about the specs that I'm using for P3D. I could have just posted them, but I think it's probably easier if I do it in a quick video. Hopefully this will be, I'm recording this at 1440p. So you should be able to see what I'm doing. If not, I'm going to explain anyway. This is just recording software. So first thing, if I just go into my system, I'm running Windows 10. So the operating system, Windows 10, I've absolutely no problems with it whatsoever. Out of all the software that I've needed to load, I've had one problem with some really old Logitech webcam software that we're going to use streaming. The new software on the new Logitech camera I've got is fine. Everything else, perfect. I've got an Intel processor here, Intel Core i7-4790 at 4 gigahertz. It's not actually at 4 gigahertz, we'll go into that later. 32 gig DDR3, and obviously 64 bit operating system. I'm going to have two Samsung 850 EVOs SSDs. One's got the operating system on, and it's got P3D, Active Sky, all my simulator software is on one of these S SSDs. Uh, I have two of them, and then I've got a two terabyte, seven thousand two hundred RPM uh, hard disk as well, which I record the videos to. They record directly to that. Display adapters is uh, that's the onboard one, which I don't particularly use. But I've got a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980. And that's basically it for that. If I just go into, uh, I have a program on here called AI Suite. I'm using a Republic of Gamers motherboard, which comes with this AI Suite. As you can see here, bottom left corner of this, I've all the clock, the CPUs, each core to 4.7 gigahertz. I tested this. I went through, gradually built it up, and it's the the, the cores are running at 4.7 gigahertz. Which, when you look at the frequencies, how you overclock these, if you know anything about it, is it's times 47. That's the the important number for times 47. Graphics cards at 1300 megahertz. I haven't overclocked the graphics card. There is a possibility doing that, but. Overclocking the graphics card for I think P3D is more CPU intensive than anything. So that's it for the the, the, the system. Uh, P3D in FSX was a lot of tweaking the config file. I haven't tweaked the config file. I put one little tweak in. I'll show you what that is now. To get to your config file, you go into Users, which is me, App Data. Roaming, Lockheed Martin, Prepared 3D V2, and you've got your Prepared 3D config file here. Ignore that one, that's just that's a, a copy. But click if I double click on that, there's lots of settings in here you can change. I have added one setting to this. Now, the setting I've added is under, um, if we go to here, main, right at the bottom, I've got this option put on which is always full load what equals one the problem with p3d is if you fly in one scenario and then you change and you you, you reload something you load another save file it doesn't it eats up the memory and it keeps it it keeps your last saves in memory and because p3d is a 32 bit program it's limited to four gigabytes of memory now when you've got 32 gigabytes of memory it's limited to, to four it eats that memory and you'll get out of memory errors what always full load does all it does is every time you reset a flight or you load a new flight or you create a new scenario it will wipe out the memory it starts from scratch on longer flights, if you're doing real long flights where a lot of add-on scenery has been added, uh, loaded in, you might get an out-of-memory error. 
There's some things we can do in actual P3D to prevent them errors, but inevitably if you do some really long flights when you've even got these settings turned down, you will get out of memory aided, uh, errors. If I then go into, uh, let me just close that down. Track IR I use, and I'll just launch that now. So that's coming up there. So track IR is now active. This is the screen. I'm using the track clip, clip pro, track clip pro, sorry. And I've got a, the profile I'm using is a copy of default. And the only difference I've done in track IR from the default profile is I've just changed the center buttons on one of the joystick buttons and the pause buttons on one of the joystick buttons. I've done nothing else to it. None of these settings in here have changed from the default set out. It's just worked straight out of the box. What I have done, you'll notice, is I have it running as administrator. When I double click that icon then, if I just close it down again, it's asking me, it's, it's using the UAC user account control and asking me if I want to, to run it, to run as administrator. Everything I run, according to Flight Simulator, runs via administrator. So I've created the shortcut to run it as administrator. Active Sky Next, I've already got running. So I, I run Active Sky Next as administrator again. And I have this amazing little app here called Borderless Gaming. You can get this on Steam for a couple of dollars, or if you just type in Borderless Gaming, the guy who, who wrote the program has his own website, and it's a GitHub site, and you can download it for free. You don't have to pay for it. I run that as administrator. And basically what you do is when you open Prepared 3D, you put it into a, and you can run it in a window but in full screen mode then it still acts like it's in a window so you can alt tab out to do other things usually i run p3d full screen anyway when i'm recording videos for youtube i record it full screen so i don't need to use this however when i'm streaming if i stream on twitch i use it in window mode but with borderless gaming run for this video, because I'm capturing the screen as well, I'm running it in window mode, P3D in window mode, and using borderless gaming, so we'll still get the full screen. So I've just minimised it. It's minimised down down to there now. That is everything, I think. Track IR. Obviously, the recording software is running as well. That's a, a, a software called Action. Just have a small hit on the frames, but not too much. That was just a web page where I was getting some settings. So if I run P3D now, I'm going to run it from scratch. Again, it's running as administrator. So this is running from the SSD, so it's pretty quick to, to boot up this, this part. Uh, I'll change from the Cessna. I'm going to change to the TBM850. It's my favourite aircraft at the moment. I'm going to select here Active Sky. Uh, I'm at, we're at Blackpool. I'm going to change that airport. I'm going to change it just so I'm on the active runway. Okay, it's daytime and we're going to just click OK. So now, even though it's running window mode, it's automatically jumped into full screen. And just as this loads up, let's black the screen out, which is fine. When you're running, there's no box for it loading because I've because I've got it running window more than full screen. It blackens the screen, so you don't get the little uh, uh, progress bar of it loading. So right, we're in track IR is working straight away, and it's quite smooth. Now. What I've actually done is I've took off the frame limiter. Usually I have it limited to 30 FPS. I've took it off for now to see what we get. So now I'm averaging about between 30 and 40, sometimes jumping up to 50 FPS, just stationary here. Let's just shut them up. 
Okay, so we're going to have a look at what settings we've got for this. Settings and display. So, graphic settings. Custom profile, because I've changed it. Full screen settings are obviously my graphics card, 980. GTX 980. And I'm running 2560 by 1440 by 32. Uh, basically 1440p. Blackout the desktop selected. Autofill main view is selected. Image and texture quality is FX anti aliasing is on. Uh, MS anti aliasing is two samples. Antistropic, antistropic, antistropic filtering four. And texture resolution at a medium. I can run it and run this at ultra. However, I will get out of memory errors pretty quickly after probably half, a, half an hour. It looks fantastic. But I get out of memory errors, which isn't really uh, good enough for me. Hardware tessellation. This is important. This this really affects your FPS. I have that enabled, so it it obviously oh, it, it tells you what it does. It generates terrain on the GPU. So I want it to use my graphics card because it's a big graphics card. It's it's powerful, and it puts it onto the GPU as much as it can. So I have that enabled. I have VSync on because. My monitor is only uh, isn't uh, 120 frames or whatever it is. So I have it. I have the VSync on. Triple buffering's on. I don't have a wide aspect view ratio. Um, uh, Mitmap VC panels, virtual cockpit panels are on, and transparency at zero for 2D. So that's the graphic settings uh, general. Next, if we're going to scenery, level detail on I, tessellation factor is I, mesh resolution 19 meters. I'm going to tweak this and see what I get. I adjusted a lot of these when I was getting out of memory errors. I really want to get that down to five because the Orbix software that I use, Orbix England, it enables up to five meters resolution, but I'm getting out of memory errors. So I've tweaked a bit of these texture resolution at one meter. I really want to try and get that down to seven centimeters. Uh, again, I'll have to do some tweaking on that. I have land detail textures on. The scenery complexity is very dense. Autogen vegetation density very dense, and building density very dense. If I'm not recording a video, I can crank these right up to full without any issues. I get quite a, an hit on FPS. I can get around 30 FPS with these on dense without recording software running. Water detail is set to medium. I've only got reflections set on clouds and the vehicle. No other reflections on the bathymetry is off. You know, I'm not interested in what's underwater. Special effects detail and distance are both set at medium. On to lighting. All them are selected. Landing lights, lens flare, HDR is all selected. Shadow quality is at, at medium. Enable terrain to receive shadows is on. Terrain, terrain shadow cast distance I've got at zero. Cloud at zero. And object at 6,000 meters. I can can probably turn them up a little bit, but that's what I found working when I'm recording. Vehicle, internal, external, cast and receive shadows. I think the internal vehicle receiving shadows is important to get a bit of immersion. You see the shadows off your, your vehicle inside on your cockpit. Weather, cloud draw distance 90 miles, no thermal visualisation, volumetric fog is on. Detailed clouds and the cloud coverage density is at medium. Disable turbulence. I don't want to disable turbulence. I want to have that, that going. Okay. On to traffic. Aviation traffic at 30 for airline and general aviation. Vehicle density is at low. I crank them up when I'm playing normally. When I'm recording, I have them low just to protect the FPS. Aircraft labels, I should really turn that off. I don't think that's going to give us any any 
significant hits, but should turn it off for a bit of reason. Land and sea traffic, road vehicles at 25, ships and ferries at 20, leisure boats at 25. Into simulation, uh, prompt on exit, pause on task switch. I don't want it to pause on, on task switch. I don't want it to pause because when I'm streaming and I want to do something on the on the stream, I can have it on autopilot and, and get it going. I don't want to use the system time for default flight, or else I'll always be flying at night. Show scenario, start up screen. I want that on, I want to pick what I'm doing. Panel serialization. I've just realised what that is. Click this checkbox to enable saving and loading panel data to flight file. I've had a problem where every time I load a, a, a plane up, I've got to change the panel. I'm going to turn that on. I've had to reset the panel to my settings every time. That should fix it. Air traffic control. I don't use the in-game air traffic control. I either don't use air traffic control or I'll be on VATSIM or something similar. Units and measure is fine. Information text continuous fine. Sound that's not going to affect anything really. Flight path, we don't have a bother with that. I don't know what point of it. Failures are, uh, are off. Controls I don't enable any controllers at all because I do all the controlling through FSUI PC. Realism is set to maximum except gyro drift. I haven't got that set, but we can sort that. I don't want auto mixture, I don't want unlimited fuel. Uh, attachments, I don't have any attachments on uh, the aircraft anyway, so ignore them. Time and season and weather, it's going to be active sky, that's fine. And that is basically my settings. So like I say, it's unlimited now is I'm hitting 30 to 40 FPS. So let's just uh, drop that flaps. Oh, that's the key. It drop the flaps. Oh, let's just have a quick flight to see what it's. Let's quickly take it up and see what that FPS does when we get flying. Probably, I'm probably taking it of. Oh, to steer it. I'm gonna crash. Oh shit! Um, bollocks. Right, I've had to just switch uh, aircraft because. Uh, not aircraft, I've had to reset the scene because I crashed. That'll be in blooper reel, reel I'm sure, at some point. What we were doing, I was just about to take off, so I've uh, set one degree of flaps. The reason why I crashed is because I had a setting wrong in FSUI PC. Jumped up to 50 FPS then. Keeping generally above 30. Bring the wheels up. So drop to about between 25 and 40 at, at times, so let's just have a look. I'm going to look outside this window, get some of that auto gen in, this, in the view. 30 frames, I can probably add between probably about 10 frames per second if the recording software is not running uh, quite easily. And it it's quite smooth on the track IR. Move it quick. 
work it, it's responsive. And that's basically the, the, the settings. That's what I use when I record the YouTube videos. The um, scene I'm using is I've got Oibix World and I have Oibix England and Oibix Wales running at the moment. So this is the Oibix England software. You can get it to look a little bit better changing the, tech, the, the mesh resolution but like I said I get out of memory errors. And that is basically it's just a look outside. And it's around 30 frames per second. It's around 30 frames per second. Which, it, which isn't bad at 1440p. And what I've started doing on the videos as well. At the moment the videos I've got on YouTube are... 1080 at 60 frames per second and when I thought about this if I'm only if I'm limiting this to 30 frames per second what's the point of that using having a 60 FPS video because it's just gonna be capturing the same frame twice that's my theory anyway so I've dropped the FPS in the videos to 30 and some of the new videos that are coming on are, will be at 1440p 30 frames per second rather than 1080 60 see how that goes see what the, qual the quality looks pretty good uh, I think at the moment this moment we're at the round the world series um, at about six five or six is is online I'm actually currently do it at I have uh, let me think. I'm at uh, episode 11 for that. Episode 11 is upload. Up, episodes 11 downwards are uploaded to YouTube. Um, they haven't been released publicly yet, but the the I think 10, 10 and 11 are at 1440p, 30 frames per second. And that's just just something else. That's the settings. But part of the vlog, I just want to talk about as well. It's another comment that uh, Thomas made. I really am genuinely grateful for for your comments, Thomas. It, it's um, it's giving me some feedback. You know, I'm pretty new to doing YouTube videos. I've streamed quite a bit in the past. I've done quite a few live streams on Twitch, but I'm new to to doing to doing videos on YouTube. I'm not new to recording videos for my own amusement, my own entertainment, but um, putting them on YouTube is a new experience for me. And when I started the channel, it's only a couple of weeks back now, I've no, uh, I'm not, I haven't started the channel to to get big. You know, there's some big YouTubers on there. I have no intention of going anywhere near that. The production quality that they have far surpasses what I can do. I do it for my own entertainment. I enjoy flying in flight simulators. I enjoy the process of capturing a video, editing it, sort of, you know, cutting the audio, doing the editing, rendering the video, and then stick it online. It's not intended to be a channel where I want to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of views. It's not a channel where I intend to make any sort of living out of it. I have no intention of that happening at all. It's mainly for my own entertainment. I'm not the type of, I'm a, a pretty sedate, some people say sad, boring guy. I'm not gonna be bouncing about, getting excited about things. I'm pretty much very blunt, straight to the point. This is what I'm doing. If people want to 
watch the videos that's great I am going to promote the channel a little but it's when I get comfortable in thinking that videos really decent at the moment I don't think that the production value of the video is is high enough the audio certainly isn't up to spec what I would like I need to get a better mic I need to get better at cutting the audio and putting filters and, and, and whatever on the audio so I have got a plan to promote the, the channel on some forums and just just to say just to just to see if people want to view what I'm doing and if they don't fine if they do that's fine as well I think the issue I have is at the minute as well especially with the around the world tour that I'm doing is the videos are very long this video is going to be probably 30 minutes in the end me talking away and I think people want more bite-sized five minute ten minute videos I don't know my videos are very long so it's it's what I like like to do and what I like to watch but I am planning to promote the video and probably get more people interested I have got plans to do tutorial videos uh, I have got plans to do I've got a job lot I've got a real lot of blooper videos a blooper reel is going to be massive um, already it's it's probably over 10-15 minutes now and that involves a lot of me swearing and, and whatnot. but that'll be probably a fun element of it and what I've had some experience on Twitch which and everybody gets them on Twitch anybody who's ever broadcast on Twitch you'll get the experience where somebody will say or somebody will try and flame you will be troll, trolls and I, it doesn't bother me I'm, I'm too long in the tooth to be bothered by immature people doing that however it's like this take off just on now I haven't followed any procedure for doing what you should do to, to start this aircraft up I'm doing 80 90 degree banks now shouldn't be doing that I'm flying at less than a thousand feet over populated area I shouldn't be doing that it's a game I was on twitch the other night and someone said oh you have you you haven't uh, I was flying from Blackpool Blackpool's my local airport and somebody was saying on Twitch well no you haven't followed the uh, the correct procedure for landing at this airport what do you mean I haven't followed the correct procedure well if you look at the uh, uh, someone say if you look at the uh, arrival procedure you should fly over this, this is runway uh, here coming to Blackpool now that's runway 28 you fly over runway 28 for the ILS at 2500 feet you fly 93 degrees for X amount of miles, you then fly 63 degrees for drop down to 2,000 feet before you establish on the ILS. Yeah, I know that. Blackpool's my local airport. I live 20 mile, 25 mile from it. I fly Cessnas from this airport. I fly Cessnas from this airport every other week. Um, I know the procedure for joining in Blackpool. And this person who was trying to flame me on Twitch has got the approach procedures off the internet and said this is the procedure. And he's quite correct, it is the procedure. But not when you're flying VFR it isn't. The procedure when you're flying VFR is what ATC tell you to do. And it's... I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably ranting in the wrong forum because I haven't had any of this from YouTube but obviously I'm very new on YouTube it's um, uh, I know that I will get it with the videos I post so the procedure VFR is you do what ATC tells you and nine times out of ten for runway 28 you join the pattern the standard pattern doing a right downwind that is nine times out of ten at runway 28 is a right downwind you join and you join it uh, I think patter entry is probably a thousand feet that's VFR 
the approach plate they're talking about is for somebody coming on an ILS approach in, a, in an airliner, not in a VFR flight. But when I comment, 500. Jesus Christ almighty, when I told the guy this, he w wouldn't have it and that's what I want to get away with, I'm not doing this to, to have arguments with people, so I did this video specifically for Thomas who asked a question and that's what I'll tend to do with anybody who's constructive and um, asking questions, I'll respond to them, anybody who's been uh, a troll, 500. I'm not going to bother with. That's just a rant, and it's, it was mainly directed at Twitch because the experience I had on Twitch the other night. So that is, is basically it. Any other ideas for videos you want me to do, any other aircraft, I'm quite happy to uh, look at and say, yeah, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing a, a 90 degree bank to get onto runway 28. But it's almost perfect. Uh, yeah, any any other videos? Five hundred. I'm glad to shut that guy up. He's doing my absolute nothing. Any other ideas for videos you want me to do? Uh, places you want me to fly over? I'll have a go at it. I'll have a go at it. 90 degree turn didn't help me, did it? Just it in 25 on touchdown there. Let's see if we can stop before I end up runway. So that's my settings, that's my little rant, that's what I really want to gonna be doing with the channel is just doing things for my own entertainment really. But I'm really open to anything constructive, criticism otherwise, I'm really open to any ideas people have want me to do because you know one other thing I haven't mentioned is I haven't done any multiplayer videos. In the right circumstance with the right people, I love to play multiplayer. I've done a couple of times shared cockpit with one of my friends and he's one of my friends I know you know face to face I'd love to do shared cockpit with somebody uh, PMDG with, with somebody who, who I've never met before and do something interesting but you've got to just be very wary about multiplayer you sometimes get people who are just there to to mess about but like I said multiplayer if I get you know a decent uh, place flying I'll do some multiplayer videos I'll do some vaccine videos I'm pretty sure in the near future um, and that's about it so I know it's gone on a bit I can talk a little bit it's gone on that's basically my settings how I operate P3D if you've got any ideas to to make it look a bit better or you, know, you want any help on anything quite experienced in this now so just drop me a message drop me a, a comment and what I've got next is uh, like I said there's another five or six round the world toy videos ready to go they're up uploaded I'm filtering through once twice a week at the moment I'm going to do, do some PMDG videos because I love the PMDG 737 definitely be doing some some videos of that once I've got uh, take a break from the round the world tour do a couple of p.m. DG and then back to the to it all right guys thanks for watching catch you later